Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to try another beer from a brewery who I have never tried anything from. So quite excited for this one actually because this is a recommendation from my good friends Casey and Eric over at Sotogami Akihabira who are of course now retired beer tubers unfortunately. I do hope that they come back to it at some point in the future. But for this one we are going to go to Gunma Prefecture which is of course very well known for its uh, sake as well. There's some very, very good sakes, Nihon shoes from, uh, from Gunma Prefecture. But for this one, we are going to try my first beer from the Tsumagoi Kogan Brewery. So for this one, we are going to have a taste of the Tsumagoi uh, Momogatari Stout. So this beer is, it has a little bit of an interesting story, this one. So one of the reviews that I watched from Casey and Eric's, you know, maybe about a year, a year and a half ago, something like that, they reviewed the stout from this brewery. It was an Irish stout, it was called, actually, which they said was really, really good, one of the best stouts that you would find in Japan. So, you know, I was automatically very, very curious about this one. When I told Casey and Eric that I was going back to Tokyo, um, I asked them, you know, can you get me a can of this beer? Because apparently it's from, um, you know, a very, you know, in Japan, the big problem is the distribution networks are not the best and it's very strange for a country that is very very far forward and everything else that you know a lot of these wines and sakes and beers and stuff like that just don't even get out of their own prefecture but um, it, but Casey very kindly bought me a gift box of all the different beers from uh, from Sumagoi Kogan so you will see a couple of different reviews from this brewery but I thought I would kick off with the stout which was the one that really kind of piqued my interest in the brewery so a huge thank you to Casey um, for buying this one for me and a big shout out to Eric as well. It was really cool to film another kind of a collaboration review with them and I'm sure we will do more of those in the at some point in the future because I will be up in Tokyo visiting them I'm sure. So um, yeah let's get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I will do in the future from Sumagoi Kogan. As I say, I've got a couple of the other beers to review. Um, do make sure you check out all my social media. All of those links are there as well. There's playlists there for all the beers from different countries. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. And please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is huge. Hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Sumagoi Kogan then, and there actually wasn't too much information available on this brewery, which was kind of strange. For some reason, a lot of these sake and craft beer breweries in Japan really just do not update their websites. But um, the Sumagoi Kogan Brewery are based in Sumagoi Mura, which is a small village of around 10,000 people in Gunma Prefecture, a little bit out to the west of Tokyo. But this brewery is part of the Asama Takahara Brewery Company, who I believe also produce sake and things like that as well but the village is known to be fertile and um, for growing vegetables mainly cabbages actually because of the ash deposits from Mount Asama and also for its very cool climate as well they've got quite a low average temperature from the year and a lot of their local foods are actually based on this cabbage that uh, the region is very very famous for but this brewery have their own restaurant on site which is called the Sumagoi Takahara restaurant and this serves a wide you know it serves a lot of variety of pizzas and pastas and they've also got some Japanese dishes in there as well which as I was saying use the local cabbage which is uh, their kind of local speciality product as well but they do a couple of different beers there they've actually got two different ranges of beers They've got the Sumagoi Kogan ones and another range in there. And you can get, I think it's it's the something Gunma beers actually. But you can, if you go on the website, you can buy box sets of the Sumagoi Kogan ones and also the uh, the Gunma beers as well. Which, I, I don't know, um, the ones that Casey and Eric reviewed were the Sumagoi Kogans and this, these were the ones that I was uh, very much interested in. So yeah, that was unfortunately all I was able to find on this brewery. I do wish the Japanese um, craft breweries would update their websites a little bit more. I couldn't even find anything on 
on the Asama Takahara company to uh, to tell you a little bit more about um, when I tried googling it to try to find the company pre the company profile even that didn't come up so yeah some of these companies unfortunately in Japan are just a little bit of a mystery there was no newspaper articles even the wise man over at Beer Tengoku had very little on this brewery so yeah all I can tell you is this is a brewery that apparently do a very very good stout and I'm not sure if this is actually a different beer from the Irish stout the one that Casey and Eric reviewed was the Irish stout not simply stout but it looks as if it's in the same kind of uh, alcohol range and stuff like that so maybe they've just changed the name from Irish stout to stout for this one but yeah very very curious to see how this beer turns out so I'll just like have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up there you can see um, really kind of interesting actually it's almost a little bit like Japanese cartoon sort of a uh, psychedelic actually this is obviously a tribute to uh, Mount Asama or uh, something like that and referring to the you know the local ash deposits stuff like that you can see the cabbages kind of uh, growing around there and there's a Japanese woman who's obviously very happy at the flowers and things like that there's a little piggy and, uh, and an owl and stuff like that so I'm just guessing you know this is probably some of their local uh, animals and things like that that they have there so yeah nice bottle cap on this one as well I will try and preserve that to keep in my collection and you can see all of these different beers actually have um, a little top label like that you can get these in cans incidentally as well and um, yeah I'm not sure how widely distributed these are in Tokyo of course you get the different prefecture stores which can be quite interesting um, and uh, you know I think there is it 47 prefectures there are in Japan something like that but um, yeah, you know, it says on the top it says Aisteru Yomu. So, yeah, I guess, um, or is it Aisteru Nomu? I guess I love drinking, but yeah, who can blame them for saying that? But nicely presented beer, this one. I do like the little cartoons on this. And uh, of course, if you do have any more information on Sumagoi Kogan, do please comment in the section below and let me know. But this one is a 4% stout beer, um, and it says, you know, best before the 19th of July. Uh, or sorry, best before the 13th of July 2019. I'm reading the date the other way around. But yeah, lovely presented beer this. So let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then, yeah. Nice little smoky opening on this one. I'll keep the bottle cap for that as well. Um, but yeah, let's get it out and into the glass. And it's one of the interesting things as well. Um, one of the things I should say about the Japanese craft beers is um, the little Jibiru breweries that started up I guess it was it the, the 90s, the 1990s when these breweries started up there was a boom in these and a lot of them were brewing you know Kulshes, Alts, Pilsners, Weizens and uh, and stuff like this it's interesting to see one of these very smaller breweries because uh, they do have German style beers as well they've got a, a Weizen uh, a wheat beer, a uh, Merzen, and uh, I forget what the other one that was in that packet was as well. But um, yeah, they've got all of these different types of beers. But they've also got a stout as well, which the stout obviously is an English style beer. But yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured a nice dark ebony rosewood colour, um, which is exactly what you would expect to be honest with you. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there, and a few little ones just heading up towards uh, the bottom of the of that head there you know it looks very very nice pretty much as you would expect from uh, a stout beer the head on this one incidentally is a you know it's pretty much a light kind of pale sort of tan color this one but yeah it looks very very nice one thing I should say about the stouts as well I guess and Casey and Eric pointed this out in their video and um, if it's an Irish stout you know it doesn't have lactose added to it, it was also known as a dry stout um, but the um, most stouts that you would get brewed in England did have lactose added to them. It was the milk stout. So when the dry stout came along and the Ir or, or the Irish stout came along, however you want to name it, um, it was you know a completely different style. And from what I understand, the Irish stout that these guys did at Sumagoi Kogan was uh, very very good. You know Casey and Eric really really enjoyed that one. So as I said, I am very very curious to see how this turns out. But it seems to be you can't actually order the Irish stout anymore, although. You know, again, this is one of the th Japan. It's difficult. They they really do not update their websites and stuff enough here. So if you've had the Irish stout from this brewery recently, do let me know in the comments section below and let me know if anyone has any idea whether this is the same beer as uh, the Irish stout. But yeah, it's you know it looks very nice. Looks exactly as you'd expect. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Oh, tell you right now. It certainly smells the part. So yeah, 
lovely little bit of roasty black malt in this one. Definitely a nice bit of chocolate in there. It almost smells like a kind of charred chocolate and um, a well-fired chocolate, a high kind of percentage cocoa actually. Nice little bit of brown sugar in there. Um, I would say it's a little bit of a kind of treacly molasses sort of thing, but at the same time it does have a little element of toastiness to it. Yeah, some almost brown bready notes in there as well. And as I say, this beer really does smell the part. You know, in terms of a, a an Irish stout or an English stout or whatever, it really does smell the part. It's got a good balance between those roasty black malt characters and a little bit of the sweetness that you'd expect maybe of the more American type stouts as well. But um, it is leaning a little bit more towards that roasty brown sugar, um, black malty sort of thing. So yeah, it would in terms of its aroma, it does come across as a little bit more of a, an Irish dry stout kind of thing rather than a milk stout or a sweet stout. Um, but yeah, lovely smelling beer. That little bit of earthiness, I would say, from the hoppy side of things too. And maybe a little element of a kind of juicy, uh, a slightly red fruity ester coming out of this too. But yeah, it's as I said, this beer really does smell the part. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the stout from Sumagoi Kogan in uh, Sumagoi Mura, if I'm pronouncing that correct. Sumagoi Mura, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from Gunma Prefecture out to the west of Tokyo here in Japan. Thank you again to Casey for giving me this beer. Big shout out to Eric as well. And uh, I do hope to see Soto Sotogami Akihabira back on the air at some point. And this was, as I say, this was a review of theirs that I always used to enjoy watching. I have watched it about five, six times, something like that. But let's get stuck into this one. A stout beer at 4% ABV from Sumagoi Kogan in Gunma Prefecture. Slanja Skull Kampai. Oh yeah. Right. I'll tell you straight away. I can see why Casey and Eric like this one. You know, this is, um, for me, I mean, I've drunk some of these big, and with Casey and Eric the other day, they were saying to me, with this one, you know, the stouts that we were drinking, the Icelandic and the Danish ones and things like that. This one, um, it's this is a good beer. It's not quite... Um, on the same lines as uh, as those stouts and stuff we were drinking the other day, but in terms of like a classic, you know, real ale stout, if you can call it that, this is very very solid. I can really see why they enjoyed this one. You know, um, to find this beer in Japan as well, especially from a little, um, I, get, I don't know if you could term these guys a GB brewery, and um, but to find a beer of this quality from a brewery that's, you know, brewing the German styles and things like that is really pretty impressive actually. So, uh, you know, a big thumbs up to the guys at Sumakoi Kogan for this one. And I'm guessing in terms of its style, just from the first sip of this beer that I've had, this is most definitely a dry stout. Um, from what I gather, and I was looking on beer Tengoku and, um, and Rate Beer and stuff about this one, the alcohol content of this beer can vary a little bit, so I don't know if they still play around with the recipe a little bit, but in terms of its flavour profile, just on the first sip you can tell with this one, this is an Irish stout, a dry stout, rather than a sweet stout or an American stout, or however you want to term it. But yeah, in terms of a kind of classic English style, um, Irish style, real ale style, I guess is probably the best descriptor to use. This is pretty damn solid. So yeah, I can see why Casey and Eric enjoyed this one. So yeah, with this beer then, um, in the middle, of, across the middle of your palate, you can feel this nice roasty black malt backbone and um, on top of that there is a little bit of sweetness there you can get some nice chocolatey malt out of this one and it is quite a high cocoa chocolate you know 80 90 percent sort of thing further into the aftertaste you're going with this beer as well more and more of that kind of roasty black malt edge that this beer has is starting to push its way out of the flavor and um, in the center of your palate too there's a little bit of brown sugar in there and again it's leaning towards the kind of roasty toasty side of things. This beer does have a good little bit of dryness and bitterness to it and not all of it is from the hops, there's a good bit of it is from that malt base in there. But I would say when you get further and further into the aftertaste, the very centre of your palate starts to sweeten up a little bit. 
but the roasty black malts uh, and some of the earthiness from the hops as well really do start to, to kind of push their way out. The further forward you come on your palate with this one as well, I want to say there's a little element of woodiness to this one. Yeah, there is a little element of a slightly woody flavour to this one, maybe even a little bit of nuttiness. You come further forward on your palate, a little bit of woodiness in there, and then in the centre, just when you move over to the centre of your palate a little bit, there is definitely an element of a, a slightly nutty flavour to this one, which is um, which is really nice actually. I like how these flavours are kind of combining. Um, as I say, the, my impression of the flavour of this one is definitely one of these dry Irish stouts. Um, by no means is this a sweet stout, although in the aftertaste it does have a little bit of sweetness to it, which is uh, which is quite nice. On the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of earthiness sitting there. When you come further forward along the sides of your tongue that just smooths out a little bit and then you've got a nice um, slightly grassy floral aromatic note towards the front corners of the palate. Then when you go round the very front curve of the tongue you've got a nice little bit of a, a lighter kind of grassy thing. But that earthiness I would say spreads forward um, quite a little bit. I'd be curious to know what... Um, hops they've used in this one. I don't think it's American hops. I think the hop in this one, the earthiness that comes out of this beer, definitely suggests a more English hop. Um, and it's not Fugles. I would say it's maybe like Kent Goldings or uh, or something like that. There, there's definitely English hops being used in this beer because the earthiness is just a little bit darker. It almost has just a little bit of that herbal quality to it as well that you would expect of uh, of the English hops. But yeah, this beer goes together very, very nicely. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, as well, you've got that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. Yeah. And to me, it's a very kind of straight up, just very slightly figgy um, flavour that comes out of this one. The further into the aftertaste you go, it's got a little bit of a slightly candied red fruit ester to it. Maybe just like a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry. Like, as I always say, these little heart-shaped sweets you get in the Harry Bo Star Mix, it's got a little bit of an element of that to it, which is very, very nice. But the further into the aftertaste you go, the earthiness from the hops is coming out and more of those roasty um, black malt. Uh, are pushing their way out as well, but there is that little element of um, brown sugary sweetness in the middle of your palate too. But yeah, um, this is a really nice beer, this one. And as I say, this brewery, under this brand, they're brewing, you know, uh, a Weizen, a Merzen, and there is another uh, beer in there that I've forgotten to mention. I, I can't think what which one exactly that is. But yeah, under this brand, you know, this strikes me as one of the kind of little G beer breweries, so to find a kind of English style beer, if you like, or a real ale, you know, it's it's not right to say it's an English style beer when it's an Irish stout, right enough, uh, or a dry stout, but I think you get the point that I'm trying to make, but to find a stout that is done this well, and especially a kind of traditional um, real ale style stout, it's, it's really surprising, and I, as I said, I can see why Casey and Eric enjoyed this one so much, so I really you know, quite um, agree with the review that they gave of this one. Whether this is the, the, say, the exact same beer, the Irish Stout and the Stout, I really don't know, but it's in the same alcohol range and there doesn't seem to be different untapped and rate beer ratings for it. Again, that is sometimes what happens with these little breweries in Japan. They really need to update their websites a little bit more. But yeah, lovely, lovely beer, this one. If you enjoy um, Irish Stouts, and a traditional English style stouts as well. This is one I think you really would enjoy. In terms of the mouthfeel, um, mid-bodied beer all the way, I think the carbonation does have that little bit of prickle to it. As I always say with these Japanese beers, it has that element of Japanese drinkability to it. You know, the Japanese view beer is something to clear the throat with. This beer certainly reflects that. Even the craft beers have to have that um, element of drinkability to them. The mouthfeel overall it's quite smooth, yeah, um, and I, th I would say that I'd be using this beer in terms of the bitterness, I would say it's maybe around 40, pushing 50 a little bit. There's a bit of IBU both from the hops and from the malt base in this one, but that malt base does have a little bit of sweetness to balance it out. Um, nice little bit of, um, as I say, the malt base well balanced, nice little bit of bitterness from the hops as well, and there's a little element of juicy fruitiness to this beer as well. But overall, just to summarise this one, a really nice um, traditional um, English sort of style stout. This one, a nice dry Irish stout, I guess you would say as well. I keep saying English in this one, but it really should be more 
of um, you know it's just a very solid kind of real ale type stout this one and it has that element of Japanese drinkability to it so yeah let's leave it at that for this one so big thumbs up to the guys at Sumogoi Kogan for this it is more of a kind of traditional old school beer this but um, a lot of people do like that and it's cool to find this from a brewery in Japan that's brewing mainly the German styles of beer this is one of the more unusual finds that you're gonna you're gonna get in Japan and Gunma Prefecture of course is well known for its sake so uh, make sure you go and visit it at some point. It's another prefecture that I do need to go and visit as well. I think I visited about 10 or 12 of the different prefectures here in Japan. So yeah, have a go at this beer if you get the chance. And again, thank you to Casey at, um, of Sotogami Akihabira for making this one possible. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Sumagoi Kogan as well and do let me know if any more information that you happen to have about this brewery too but thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon this is the stout beer from Sumagoi Kogan in, um, in, in Gunma Prefecture out to the west of Tokyo here in Japan until the next time stand just now and I will catch you guys later and do let in the comment section tell the guys at Sotogami Akihabira how much you want to see them back because I'd love to see them start reviewing beers again until the next time stand just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanget, Skull, Kampai.